Fort Wayne Clutch in Fort Wayne, Indiana may be the best resource today for those involved with clutches on antique automobiles, tractors, and trucks. Here we have a clutch assembly from a late 20s Kissel. It's actually a Borg and Beck clutch, and we'll talk about these two little parts in a bit. This has obviously been disassembled off of the car. It was a major effort to do that. As you can see, this thing is all rusty, etc. It's from a car that sat outdoors in Minnesota for who knows how many years. I've owned it for over 25 years here in Arizona, but outdoors in Minnesota, it's pretty rough on stuff. We had to get it apart because we're redoing a 895 engine for our Kissel that we're going to be starting shortly. And this clutch assembly needs to obviously be redone. And we're going to send it off to Fort Wayne Clutch. So this is going to be a before and after video this time. We're going to show you the before, show you what the clutch is like, etc. Then we're going to show you what it's like when it comes back from Fort Wayne Clutch. Now we've used them before when we've had clutches done, for example, for our grams, and they do absolutely superb work. Basically, they can work on any clutch that there's been for antique automobiles, tractors, and trucks. So let's look at the Borgen back here for a minute. As I said, this is already disassembled, so I'm able to lift items off. You can see the actuation system here. We've got three arms. And there's a very large spring here on this particular clutch. Now when I swing it around, this says it's a Model 41. So the little tag is here. It's a Model 41 of Borg and Beck. So there's our piece that we're going to have our actuation against. A rod actuates and pushes out. It's an amazingly strong spring. Also, you would have your throwout bearing back here when this is mounted in the car. So that's one of the pieces. Next, this particular clutch has this plate system in here, which would be a little hard to lift back out. There it is. And this runs against the clutch. These three pieces are where those arms sit exactly. And this is where we get into what those two items are for. These are two pins that I had to remove in order to get this clutch assembly apart off the car, get the flywheel off the car, and they were of course frozen in there, and the bell housing at the time was frozen, so I had to actually pull and pry these things out, which is a hell of a way to do it because you're obviously supposed to drive them out through holes. There's one hole over here, and there's one located in here yet, right there. There's one right there, and there are three of these that mount in here, and as you see on this particular plate, if you look here, at each of those points, that's where they slide back and forth and stay in alignment. That keeps this piece in line with this particular assembly. So as you can see, these might need some help. This one's not so bad, but this one's in kind of rough shape right now. But they're actually driven in. So the way this has to be assembled, I had to take two out to get the actual clutch plate out of here. And these are obviously driven in after that's put in. And of course you have to have your clutch plate out of here because that's not going to work. Clutch disc can't be in there and get the nuts off to remove the flywheel. So it was quite a job to get these pulled out. I spent a lot of time at it because as I said at the time, I couldn't get the bell housing off because the bell housing is behind this particular flywheel. So it's it was quite a conundrum to disassemble it. And since the engine wasn't turning, you couldn't line up the pins in the little opening in the bell housing where you could tap them out. So it was a hell of a thing to get apart. But nonetheless, it's a part. Another thing you should know is there's actually a bearing that goes down in here for the snout of the transmission. So the snout of the transmission is not this huge size. There's a bearing that sits in there. Sending this off to Fort Wayne Clutch, 
they would like all of the parts. They could do it without your flywheel, etc. But then you'd have to give them exact measurements, so they'd really like the parts. Quite heavy, so it's going to be quite a bit to ship. But that's going to be shipped along with the actual clutch disc assembly and the other two components that go in like this. And I'm even going to send them these two little pins and they'll get the whole thing and they're going to redo it and send it back. Now what we're going to do, as we've shown you the before, how, what the condition of everything is, we're going to show you a video afterwards about what, how the stuff looks, what's been redone, and what the total cost was. And as you can see, I'm going to again show you how everything is now. Nothing here is in what I would call usable shape. This is the way it is right now. We haven't done anything to clean anything. This is exactly as it came out of the car. You can see how dirty it makes my hands. So everything is going to go out this way, right down to the flywheel assembly right there. All right, here we have our box back from Fort Wayne Clutch already. Now what's amazing is they sent the box back from the time we shipped it up to them and back. It's been only about a week. And that's a little shocking considering their shipping involved. They actually told me when I called them up that it was going to take probably a week to do it. It took them less than a day and they called me and said it was ready. So surprise, they're really quick. And we have the box here. We're going to open the packing list first. And the reason I'm going to open the packing list is to see if it says on here what it cost. I basically remember what it cost, but I thought we'd actually look. So the total, including the actual shipping and work, $520.76. So that's what it cost us to have it done. That excludes our shipping up there. So it cost us a bunch to ship it up there, about $90 to send it up. So we're going to open up the box and see what we got back here. And keep in mind, as I said, less than a week turnaround. And even if we're in Arizona and they're in Indiana, that's pretty amazing. So let's see what we got. Oh, we got some instant foam and plastic packaging. And you'll remember from the beginning of the actual video, this thing looked terrible. Well, I'm going to try to get it out of the box here now that it's back. Put the box on the side. Pull it out. Totally clean. And we've got a series of temporary bolts that put in it to keep it together. I may have to grab myself, and I will, I think, have to probably grab an Allen wrench that's appropriate, because I can get one of these, but I doubt I can get them all. Out. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, maybe I can. Second one. Now, I can tell they've actually machined it. The reason they asked for the whole thing is they also balanced everything, which is a key here that I want to keep this together. So before I actually take it apart, we're going to mark it. I'm going to put a mark here so I can line this back up. One there, one there. So now I've got a way to line the clutch back up. So we'll take it apart here and look and see what we got. That part out. I'm also going to, even though this stuff can move around, I'm going to put everything back just the way they've got it. So we're going to mark this also. That's marked. So let's see what we can do about getting it out of here if I can. And I might not be able to because it looks like he gave us new pins. So actually it's pinned in place. So I'm not going to pull it. I'm going to instead tip it up. So they gave us new pins, which was interesting because they told me that they probably couldn't do that, but they've actually done that for us. So it's pinned in there. There's your clutch plate, all redone, cleaned up, beautiful. And the actuator against it here for when the clutch is activated. And they've actually got brand new pins in here for us. And that really surprises me because they told me that they weren't going to have them. I was going to have to use the pins we had. And they've actually got it all pinned back together. 
So it's set to install in the car. As I said, you can see it's machined all the way around the edge and cleaned up everywhere. Now with some dust on it, but that doesn't matter for anything because it's got obviously WD-40 or some sort of other oil on it to protect it and transport. But there it is in under a week, it's all done and it's perfect. And I can tell you from past results with Graham's, this thing is going to work beautiful. I've never had one from that that doesn't work beautifully. You can even read it now. Patented March 2nd, 1915. Morgan Beck right on it, which before when I sent it out, it was such a mess I couldn't even read it on it, even though I knew it was a Borgen Beck. So that gives you an idea how good a job they do. Probably not the least expensive place, but definitely absolutely awesome with the work they do. And this will be going into a Kissel Speedster that we're going to be working on. Like and subscribe. Tap the little notification bell, otherwise you won't know what all is coming up. And there's some pretty neat things coming in the future. Uh, a lot more to do with cars, machines, etc. And history of automobile related items. See you later.